In this session, we will see how to deploy a Python Flask application in an Azure app service. Uh, once you log into the Azure portal, uh, you can search for app service in here. Right. Once you have the app service, uh, click on the app service. So it shows this screen uh, wherein it gives you a brief introduction about what an app service is. And if I just read it out, you can create, build, deploy, and manage web applications uh, using single backend, and you can use uh, .NET, Java, .NET, Python, or any of the famous or normally used uh, programming languages. So once you are in here, you can click on Create button here. So it shows you multiple options. If you want to create a static web app, wherein you don't need a uh, running uh, service in the backend, you can go with the static web app. If you have a web app where you need a database connectivity, for instance, you're interacting with the database to fetch something, put something, uh, in those scenarios, you can create a web app plus database. Or if you want to run WordPress, uh, they already have a predefined a configuration for the WordPress wherein it automatically creates the database, creates the app service, does all the configurations, create the domain. So it's an easy way uh, for you to create a WordPress uh, using an app service. So today we are going with the usual web app, uh, wherein you can create any of the web app uh, using an Azure app service. So let's click on create web app. So it shows you the basic page wherein uh, you need to select a resource group. If you're familiar with the Azure, you know that every resource should be mapped put to a resource group. So let's call it as Azure Python demo. Anything. Right? So let's call the instance as ITN. Uh, let's call it as Python Flux. So next, it will ask you, uh, how do you want to publish it? Is it via the Docker image? Is it a static web app or via the code? So we'll be publishing it via the code. Uh, we'll see the container or web app later. And as part of the runtime, as I mentioned, you can select multiple languages. You can go with .NET, Java, Node, uh, PHP, and Python. So if you have a Spring Boot application, you can go with Java or uh, you got the drill. So I'm going with Python 3.9 and the operating system have an option where I would have to go with Linux and the region. Uh, you can select from any region. Uh, I stay in India, so to reduce the latency, I'll, I'll select India. Next is the pricing plan. So if you have uh, gone through the uh, what is it? What is it? Uh, if you've gone through the so if you have gone through the, uh, I keep forgetting the name, the theoretical session, you know that uh, any web app should be back, uh, tagged to a um, app service plan and uh, whatever, uh, within a single app service plan, you can add in number of web apps. So by default, when you create a web app, it creates an app service plan. So if you already have an app service plan, you can select it from the top down. From the pricing plan standpoint, it starts from one core of CPU all the way to 32 cores. And from the RAM standpoint, it starts from one GB to till to six GB. So you can see here on uh, the right side, how the price varies for each of these combination. So for our Python Flux application, uh, one core of CPU and 1.75 of RAM is more than enough, and it charges around 1,000 per month. Not a big number though. You can change if you want to. Uh, let, let's go with P2, right? And let's go to the database. As we are not creating any database or our application not interacting with any database, we'll skip this here. Deployment, uh, if at all, uh, you have a GitHub, you have a code in your GitHub, wherein every push to master, you want the app to build and deploy the latest one, you can go that way. 
Uh, right now, we'll be using the VS Core for the deployment. Uh, we'll see the GitHub later. Let's go to the networking tab. Yep, allow the uh, public access. Then you can go to the monitoring tab, uh, wherein it will ask you whether you want to enable the application insights or not. So, application insights is a very powerful tool which gives you a complete picture of how your application is being used, how many foreign errors, how many users are being used, you think it, and if the CPU peak or the memory uh, hit the uh, upper limit. So whatever usual monitoring things that you need uh, to understand how your web app is performing, you can always use the insight. So we'll have a separate session on how to uh, enable it, how to use it, how to gather the metrics. Uh, for this demo, uh, I'm just skipping it. If you want to create a tag, you can go ahead. I'm not doing it right now. Let's do review and create. So in the final page, it shows you the subscription, the resource group, what name have you used, how you're going to publish it, what is the runtime stack that I used, an app service plan. As I mentioned, I'm creating a new app service plan here. Uh, wherein uh, it uses 200 Azure compute unit with 4 GB of RAM and I didn't enable the uh, monitoring and the authentication disabled it, we can enable it later if needed. And again, content integration, if at all we want to have it, wherein you have the GitHub, every push to the master should trigger a new build and a new uh, version need to be uploaded into app service you can use that so let's create it so as part of the deployment process it does some infra thing where uh, it kind of infra has a code if you're familiar with devops behind the scenes uh, it runs an infrastructure wherein it provision the app service, it installs the Python within the uh, the box or choose the box where uh, the Python 3.9 water has already been installed and it will deploy your web app. So usually it won't take much time, so it's already done. So uh, once it's done, if you go to the resource, it shows you a bunch of things wherein it shows you uh, the status, it shows you the URL through which you can access the web app. Uh, let's give it some time. What shall we do? Yeah. So it's ready right now. Uh, you can see that uh, all the details are being loaded in here. Uh, first, the main thing is the default domain, wherein you see the ID of last dot azure website dot net again you can change this domain with the custom domain you see in here uh, but some other time let, let's go with the default domain and what you can see here so an app service plan right every web app will be tagged to an app service plan it's installed on linux now again it shows the basic details domain name if you want you can add the custom domain and virtual ip address and the hosting plan, the number of instances that we use. So if you go back to the app service plan, here you will see for the entire app service plan, how it is being performing. Right? What is the CPU? What is the memory? How much data is in? How much data is out? Wherein is kind of a network bandwidth. And as I mentioned before, as part of the app service plan, you can add multiple apps which share the same CPU and RAM. So for the same one core of CPU and one GB of RAM, you can run 10 applications if it supports, right? Right now we're only running one application. And uh, let's go back to the app. We'll come to the screen again later. Now, once you are here, let's open the default domain or the domain and see how does it look like. still taking a good amount of time to load. So for the first time when you do it, it will take some amount of time. If you go again, you go about to, as I mentioned, uh, 
if you go back to the monitoring you will see how many 500 rep you have how many data in out how many requests you got per second and the response time of those since we have disabled the metrics you're not able to see any of those things in here let's close and try again okay now we have it so here you see that uh, it's kind of uh, used an inbuilt or a default web app so when you selected the python and 3.9 as the runtime uh, it kind of deployed a uh, default website uh, that you can browse through and uh, pretty much that's it so what we'll do is we'll override this default application with our application and we'll see how it looks like so let's do one thing let's jump back to our vs code okay so in my local vs code i have a python plus application uh, if you want the source code of this one it is available at itanna slash python plus you can clone this particular project again you can you can download it or you can do a bit clone and you get this source code so once you have it in your local you can directly run flask run where within local let's copy this let me paste it here right it says welcome to azure app service tell me your name i would say it anna and then say hello it says hello it anna nice to meet you so right now if you see i'm running this from my local machine and if i go back to the vs code you see that uh, the local instance can be initiated and you see a bunch of calls being made to the particular page so let me bring this down control c now let's deploy this python flask application to our uh, app service environment so to do this do that as i mentioned there are multiple ways through which you can deploy your flask application or for that matter any application one is via the vs code so if you have an individual application you're the only one who is using it so you can always have a vs code extension and do it the other way to do it is uh, via the github if you've seen or remember the uh, screen that i've showed you as part of continuous deployment every time you push some changes to the master branch uh, a new build gets triggered a new package gets created and the new code will be deployed onto the uh, the uh, azure app service so we're not doing it right now so let's see how to deploy it with the vs code so to do that first you need to install one extension uh, the extension is called the azure app service once you install this azure app service uh, vs code extension you see an a button here which shows an azure so if you click here and the first time it will ask you to sign into azure so clicking on signing into azure will open the uh, the azure portal wherein you need to uh, authenticate it once you authenticate you could see the all the resources that are part of the subscription now if you see here as part of the app uh, as, as part of the uh, azure screen or as your extension you could see what all resources you have in your subscription now if i expand the app service it shows nothing let's do a refresh so right now it shows that i have an it anna uh, python plus application here and it shows multiple details uh, wherein the application settings database deployments there will be only one deployment will come to that later and the file so if you see your this is the only uh, hosting start.html is the one that you're seeing on the screen right now or that's being deployed right now so right now we don't have any deployment slots so i'm not going to the other details as such now how can we deploy our application or whatever i have, I have in my local to this app service in here pretty straightforward you open your explorer you do a right click and you say 
uh, hey, deploy to web app. So once you say deploy to web app as part of the drop down here, it will show it will show you all the app services that you have. Right now I have only one app service, so it's going over there. And let me select that app service. Now it will tell you uh, would you like to update your workspace to run the build commands in the target server? Yes. And you want to deploy and override any previous deployment? Yes. So if you kind of look at the uh, output window on what what's happening uh, behind the scenes, uh, pretty standard. Let me maybe turn the terminal activity logs. Yeah, uh, it's not showing here, but what it does is it creates the zip file uh, with the entire content. It pushes the zip file to the Azure function app and it deploys over there. So it saves deployment successful. Now let's jump back to our portal. Let's see the overview here. Let's do a refresh. It will take uh, some amount of time uh, to reflect the new changes. Let's do an entire refresh. I don't need it, but anyway. Now let's try it. No. Nope. Still might still be taking time time. Let's go back to log. Let's view the log stream. Okay. Any activity? App service on Linux. You gotta get endpoint. Okay, it's booting again. Listening on port 8000. Okay, let's try now. Let the default domain again. So right now you see the URL here. It is pointing to idiana python plus dot azure websites dot net. And let's do something now in cloud. Let's say hello. So it shows the new changes as such. So again, if you want to go back do some changes for instance if i don't want welcome to azure app service welcome to my website anything that you want right you can always change this save this one same do a right click deploy to web app yes deploy it so it says that it's kind of creating a zip file which is of 1.4 MB. And then once it pushes that zip file, it's been successful, you can browse the website. Uh, it takes some amount of time to reflect, but you got, you got the gist, so it shows welcome to your website. Let's do a zip file if it kind of did. No. Yeah. So as we have seen the log, so it takes some amount of time uh, to reflect the new changes you can always go to the logs and see if it's being done or not so got the new changes done creating the manifest output received one index let's try now nope still not there still not there let's do a shift by one more time yeah, so now if you think change to welcome to my website. So not the ideal way of deploying. So uh, if you are in the development state, uh, you can always do it this way. But the right way is to uh, do it via the Docker image or via the PICD pipeline where it is directly linked to your uh, GitHub or for that matter, any uh, Git provider uh, branch. Thanks for watching. See you in some other session. Bye.